Hello, welcome to my channel. Another Bibliophile Reads. My name is Greg, and I am here to do the book cover telephone tag. This was created by Elizabeth at Reading Riley. I saw it on Shannon's book, Bookish Musings and Music, and I made a comment that I thought it was a fun tag, and she said I should do it. So I'm going to consider that a tag. And in this, let me give you the original description of what this tag is supposed to do. In this game, we will play with book covers. This game can be played by anyone for any genre of books. The goal is to end up with 10 books, nine pairings, all connected to each other by an element on the book cover. This can be the subject, the font, the color scheme, etc. Whatever you find that is similar, while the books paired together will have a common thread, by the time you get to book cover number 10, it will almost likely be vastly different from the book covers you started with. These can be books you've already read or from your TBR. If you want to challenge you, you can use only books that you've already read or you can choose to start with the last book mentioned by the person who tagged you. And that is what I'm going to do. The book used by Shannon was The Escapist, How One Man Cheated Death on the World's Highest Mountains by Gabrielle Felipe. And this is the book that shows a large mountain covered in snow with a bright blue sky. And I am choosing the element of snow on the mountain. And here's my cover. Passport to Peril by Robert B. Parker. Now, this is not the Robert B. Parker of the Spencer novels. This is a different Robert B. Parker from the 50s. And as you can see, on this cover, there is a girl running in snow. So the snow is the element that connects these two covers. And this is a um, book from the 50s, and um, it is about um, post-World War II espionage. I read it as part of the Hard Case Crime when I subscribed, and I don't remember a darn thing about the book, but all of Hard Case Crime covers are really great. Now, the element that you're going to see that I take is the moon. Going After Cacciato by Tim O'Brien. There we have a moon. This is, what was it, the 1979 National Book Award winner for fiction. I have read this book twice in my life, once as an audiobook and once on a Kindle book. I happen to also own the paperback because um, that's the way I go. But here you see, and it is a story of um, the Vietnam War, and it is one of the best Vietnam War stories I have ever read. And the, the basic element of this cover that I am taking is the greenish hue. Everything just to be, seems to be a little bit green. All Heads Turn When the Hunt Goes By by John Ferris. This is a horror novel, essentially a force setting a beautiful, loving woman aflame with an all-consuming sexuality. I have not read this book. Um, maybe someday I will read this book. But it has the same greenish hue as the last one. And the element on this cover that I am taking is a sword. As you see, she is holding a sword. The Bastard by John Jakes. This is the first book in his um, Kent Family Chronicles. I have read this book on audio many, many, many years ago. Probably late 90s, maybe early 2000s, somewhere around there. Um, I picked up this book rather cheap at a thrift store because I wanted to reread it. And as you can see, my element is the man is holding 
a sword. And this is an historical novel. Um, a lot of fun when I read it. Should be a lot of fun when I read it again. But the element I'm taking is right down there. Oh, we're going to get a guest. Hey, Teddy. He's, he's not showing his face. But you can see the man is um, tightly embraced with his lady. And he's going in for his special moves to um, score with that lady. Crime de Moor by Paul Bourguetz. Bourguet. He's French. Now, in this one, you can see the man is again going in for a kiss on his lady. And that is the common thread. I have not read this book. I just bought this book for its cover. Also for um, the back cover, but um, that back cover has nothing to do with this prompt. In this prompt, you will notice that the fine young lady is very delicately dressed. Her, her, her robe is um, just barely covering her breasts. And that is the element that I am taking. The Last Days of Sodom and Gomorrah. And here you see another fine lady she has this headband with tassels, which are so conveniently covering her breasts. So, you know, they don't have nudity in the cover. Couldn't have that. And I have not read this. Again, I bought this at Powell's Book because um, it was $3. And look at that cover. How, how can you resist such a lovely young lady with tassels covering her breasts? But the element that I'm taking out of this book is the snake in her hand because beautiful young ladies with tassels covering their breasts have to have snakes. Seven Serpents and Seven Moons by Diametro Aguilera Malta. He is Ecuadorian writer. Um, he, of course, wrote in Spanish, and this is translated into English. And this just has an amazingly busy cover. There's a lot of stuff on this cover. There's um, snake, 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 and snake. So lots of snakes. You also have a woman in the background among lush foliage. You have a chimpanzee, or maybe with a monkey, smoking a cigar. But you also have a Christ-like figure with his arms extended. Now, I did read this book. And um, I read the book and going, WTF, that's a strange book. Um, and that's really all I can say about it. It's, it's very, very strange. It um, really delves deep into that um, uh, Latin American mar magical realism. It's worth a shot. I'm pretty sure this is way out of print and you're not going to find it. But again... The Christ-like figure is my element that I am taking. So now we come to The Last Days of Christ the Vampire by J.G. Echolaris. Um, again, you see a Christ-like figure with his arm extended, this time on a cross. Um, there's, whole not, there's not a whole lot going on on this cover. It's very plain, it's very red, but you do get that image. And this is a novel that says, um, it's sort of an anti-religious novel, I believe. And the, the, the theory is that within the Catholic tradition, if you drink Christ's blood, you will gain eternal life. And from that little um, phrase, the, this author is saying, Christ must have been a vampire. Okay, y you know, it's just going to be that kind of book. I have not read it. Um, it gets a, it got a lot of a special attention on its um, outrageous idea. But the elements I'm taking from this is the red cover and the black lettering up at top. So now we have Nick Carter, The Executioners. You see the, the black lettering up at top, and it has a mostly red cover, 
Now, I'm not quite the same shade of red, but um, close enough for um, horseshoes and hand grenades. And um, this is a men's adventure of Nick Carter, who goes to, I believe it was Australia, to hunt down saboteurs that are destroying the Australian military. Yeah, it's, it's just a thriller, lots of sex, some violence, pretty good, not great. Whole bunch of books in this series. They're fun. Now, the element I have on here, right down there, is you see a lady in a bikini swimming in the ocean. Now, one of the comments in the original video was, the end book would be likely vastly different from the one you started with. But me, I went full circle and tried to return as close to the original cover as I could. So I picked out another hard case crime book. This is John Lang's Grave Descend. And in here you will see a woman in a bikini swimming in the ocean to match the, the one on the last cover. Now, John Lang is actually a pseudonym for Michael Crichton. Um, I believe um, current editions of this book have the same cover, but instead of John Lang up there, um, you will see Michael Crichton, because um, this is my last book, and uh, people doing this tag are going to have to take something off this book to start their video with. You got a woman in a bikini, you got a burning boat, you got the ocean, and it's sort of greenish color, maybe in the ocean, a little darker above, whatever you want to use as an element. That is what you have. So that was my book cover telephone tag. Now, who am I gonna tag? I'm going to tag my uh, fellow 500 book challengers. These are everyone who's uh, in the 500 book challenge. And that is Criminali. I think he's in this challenge. David Wiley, Michael K. Vaughn, and Sterling Reeds. And just for grins and giggles, I'm gonna throw Steve Donahue into this uh, tag to see if he catches up to it and um, what book covers he can come up with. So, thank you for watching and keep on reading.